just once, October 2014. The Angels versus the Royals in the ALDS. Three games. That's the sum total of Mike Trout's exploits in the MLB postseason. One trip, a sweep, and it was over. For the past eight seasons, the Angels have finished with a losing record. Fangrass have pegged the Angels as having a 0.4% chance of winning the World Series in 2024. They are also projected to finish with another losing season. This is despite having one of the greatest players in the history of MLB on their team. But how could this be? How could so many losses stack up when arguably the greatest American-born talent is Manning center field? How did Mike Trout's career turn into a tragic tale of loss, pain, and suffering. Now, would anyone call the career of Ernie Banks tragic? He played in 2,528 MLB games and never once did he see the postseason. But to be fair, when Banks played, there were only two playoff spots to be had. In 1969, the field expanded to four. So Banks had very limited chances, playing on a Cubs team that clearly had angered the baseball gods and would find ways of stumbling each season, including 1969 when they blew a 9.5 game lead against the Mets. Banks hit 512 career homers and was elected into the Hall of Fame. No one blamed him for the Cubs' failures. Mostly, everyone felt sorry for him, that his talents would never get to be displayed on the world's grandest stage. The same is more or less happening to Trout now. Everyone in baseball wants to see him play deep into October, but unless the Angels defy the odds, it's not looking good for Trout in the coming season or the one after. Help isn't on the way. One person who could change this dynamic is Trout, of course, but there are real questions about where he is as a player going into his age 32 season. The fact that we can start to perform autopsies on Trout speaks volumes about his current status in the game. There is no doubt that he can have a huge monster years for the next four seasons like he used to have, but there are worrying signs everywhere when it comes to Trout. How did we arrive at this point? Does Trout's career contain clues that this day would come? And when would we apply the word tragedy to one of the greatest players the game has ever seen? Or does the nature of tragedy itself make the search fruitless because classic tragedies depend on the protagonist having a fatal flaw that dooms them. The fact is, as a player, Mike Trout had no flaws. He was the best player in MLB from the moment he stepped on the big league diamond. Yet, here we are, with questions and doubts. How could this have happened? Tragedy often forces you to think of alternatives. What if Hamlet had run off with Ophelia? What if Oedipus had given up search for his father's killer? If you can alter one thing in the sequence of events, the outcome can change drastically. For Trout, this part is simple. What if instead of going with the 25th pick to the Angels, Trout had been drafted by one of the other 21 teams that had not picked him in 2009? Imagine him on the Nationals in 2009. The Nats picked Steven Strasburg with the first round pick, a no-doubter, but the Nats also had the 10th pick that year and they went with Drew Storin, who is out of base baseball by 2017. Then, the next year, the Nats took Bryce Harper with the first pick. Talk about a lineup. Harper, Trout, Anthony Rendon, Trey Turner, and Juan Soto on the way? It boggles my mind. How many trips to the postseason would that nucleus have generated? Enough where Trout might have played in several World Series, obviating the discussion of a tragedy of his career and his lack of success. Now, what if Trout had grown up in Georgia and not Millville, New Jersey? The reason that Trout fell to the 25th pick was because he played his high school baseball in a state where teams don't pick players in the first round. Just 10 position players from the Garden State have been drafted in the first round since 1965. The bias against cold weather teams has led to some epic fails. Allegedly, the best high school outfielder in 2009 was Donovan Tate out of Cartersville, Georgia. Tate and Trout were about the same size, but Tate had been on the showcase circuit for years and played in a state where first rounders were everywhere. Tate went third to the Padres. He never made it out of Class A ball. What if Trout had signed for $6.25 million with San Diego instead of Tate? It's not like the Padres have been postseason regulars. Maybe nothing would have changed as far as Trout becoming the new Mr. October. But Trout suffered because he was from a cold weather state and scouts were nervous that he hadn't faced the toughest competition. 21 teams passed on him meaning that 21 different outcomes were available to him. If only a team had been smart enough to believe their own eyes. Another what if involves Trout's signing bonus. Trout had played well in the 2009 area code games in California and his stock was on the rise. The Angels were convinced he was the best player in the draft, but the Giants and Yankees were also interested. Trout's father, Jeff, had played in the Twins organization and knew how the business side of the game worked. And Jeff Trout told the Angels that his son wasn't signing for slot money for the 25th pick. They wanted 
wanted three million, not 1.12. And for three weeks after the draft, the Trouts didn't sign a contract with the Angels. So what if Trout had just gone to the College of East Carolina where he'd committed? Like Garrett Cole at UCLA. He could have stayed for three years and then re-entered the draft in 2012. Maybe he wouldn't have gone first in 2012. Carlos Correa did, but he might have. What if he'd become an Astro? How many rings would Trout have by now? Four? More? But it's also hard to picture a 19-year-old Mike Trout playing in East Carolina because he was in the big leagues by the time he was 19. He was in the bigs at 19 because when he was 17, he played rookie ball and hit a 352. Then, the next season, he hit a 341 between low and high single-A ball. Then, a 326 with 11 homers in 91 games in double-A, during what would have been his sophomore season at East Carolina, all with a wooden bat. In college, Trout would have swung Metal, a frightening thought to think about. But to understand what Trout was like at 20, don't look at his MLB stats, but to his AAA stats. He started the 2012 season with Salt Lake City, playing 20 games where he knocked out 31 hits for a 403 average. He was a different breed of ball player. There was no one else remotely close to him on the planet. Trout actually broke in during the 2011 season as an injury replacement, but even in 40 games, he hit five homers and drove in 16, which prorated to seasons of 20 homers and 64 RBIs. Not bad for a teenager. Trout became a regular in 2012, but not until the 21st game of the season, but he quickly established himself as the best player on the planet. First off, he joined the 30-30 club as a rookie, bashing 30 bombs and swiping 49 had a bigger impact on the game from all dimensions. And the people who were paid to know knew the truth. He's the best player in the game, said legendary A's GM Billy Bean. He's the most exciting talent I've ever seen come into the game since A-Rod and Griffey Jr. There's a 0.1% chance of finding a player like this. It happens once every 15, 20 years, if that. But numbers only do so much. How can a player who can rake like he did also go back and rob a home run by jumping higher than a man that size should jump. That's exactly what Trout did on June against JJ Hardy of the O's. And he played with such an obvious love of the game, a childlike joy that permeated everything he did on the field. For the next four seasons between 2013 and 2016, Trout would play in over 150 games each year. He had zero injury problems, despite how hard he ran on the bases and an outfield. Twice he stole over 30 bases, he won two MVP awards and finished second twice, though in all honesty he should have won it each year because he led the majors in war each of those seasons. In fact, he owns the record for the highest career war for 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 26 year olds. He was better than Ty Cobb, except for the age of 25, Willie Mays, Babe Ruth, Al Kaline, and Mickey Mantle, and Ken Griffey Jr. Mike Trout was the best baseball player between the ages of 20 and 26 that the game has ever seen seen, and perhaps that we'll ever see. There is no fatal flaw that would eventually doom him. His first few seasons, he spent the offseason sleeping in his bedroom at his parents' house, he maintained close friendships with his old Jersey buddies, and he remained a passionate Eagles fan. Nothing changed about him. He was a man of few words and stayed that way. And in 2014, the Angels ran away with the competitive AL West, winning the division by 10 games. Trout led the way, winning his first MVP trophy by leading the majors in runs scored and total base. He crushed 36 homers and drove in 111. His defense remained otherworldly. He did everything and made it look easy. Except baseball isn't easy. It's very humbling given that failing 7 out of 10 times makes you an all-star at the plate. When Trout got to the ALDS in 2014, he faced a Royals team on the rise. And this is where fate intervened. The Angels went down 0-2 by losing two extra inning games in 11, two tough losses that made the sweep inevitable. Trout got one hit in three games, a homer. Otherwise, the Royals completely shut him down. And that's been it as far as postseason goes for Mike Trout, an 83 average. Between 2013 and 2019, Trout averaged a war of nine. The only other two players that even matched that number once is Bryce Harper in 2015 and Mookie Betts in 2018. Every season was like Trout's best season. They all kind of blurred together. It's like picking out fine wine. Do you prefer the Trout 2016 or the Trout 2019? 29 homers or 45? 123 runs scored or 110? MVP awards for both seasons. But here's one very important distinction. In 2016, Trout played in 159 games. Now, in 2019, he only played in 134. So, have we finally stumbled upon Mike Trout's fatal flaw? The one chink in his armor that has led to so many years of excellent stats and poor 
poor team performance? Could it be that Mike Trout is simply unlucky? And is being unlucky even a fatal flaw? The obvious comp for Trout is Ken Griffey Jr., who also debuted at 19 and excelled in all five tools in spectacular fashion. They made incredible plays in the field while hitting frozen ropes into the stands. Statistically, Trout is the superior player, ranking fifth all-time in career war by age 29. Jr. is not on the list of top 10 players, but guys like Cobb, Mantle, Ruth, A-Rod, and Pujols are. But Jr. had 398 homers by age 29, second all-time behind A-Rod, and he was going to cleanse the sport of Barry Bonds and Balco and the entire Royd era. A-Rod was supposed to do that, but things happened. Jr. was clean. Jr. would rewrite the record books, but he didn't. And here's where the similarities between these two get too close for comfort. Trout was the best player between 20 and 26 that this sport has ever seen. Case closed. There is no argument. If Trout retired tomorrow, he'd be a first ballot Hall of Famer, like Junior. Now, what unites these two greats? Injuries. Junior played in less than 130 games in 11 of his last 22 seasons, losing 552 games or the equivalent of 3.4 seasons. During one seven-year stretch, Junior hit over 40 bombs each year. If you give him 120 more homers, he comes in at 750 for his career, 13 short of bonds. So there was a chance for the cleansing that Junior's knee, hamstrings, shoulder, thumb, and other body parts would shut down. 12 trips to the injury list in total. Now, Trout has seen even worse luck. Through his first 13 seasons, he's missed 468 games, or 2.9 seasons, a pace that exceeds Junior's. Remember that in his first five seasons, he was a tank and only missed 2% of his team's games. Since 2017, he's missed roughly 25% of his team's games, including COVID in 2020. The injuries began harmlessly, with Trout tearing the UCL of his left thumb while sliding into second and base during a game against the Braves in 2017. He opted to have surgery and missed 39 games, yet still finished the season with 33 homers while leading the majors in OPS and OPS+. This was the first time he'd ever been on the injury list, and it was a free play, the kind of thing that happens to aggressive base runners. More worrisome was his next injury list stint, which caused him to miss 18 games in 2018. Inflammation of his right wrist. Inflammation can be a stubborn thing to treat, but Trout still put up huge numbers. He led the majors in an OBP at 460, an OPS of 1088, and an OPS plus of 198, meaning that Trout was twice as valuable as an average MLB player. It was like he took up two slots in the lineup, the best BOGO in big leagues. It was too soon to say that Trout was injury prone. He was still the best player on the planet. He showed why in 2019, winning his third AL MVP award with 45 homers and 104 RBIs, while again leading the majors in OPS and OPS plus. Now, he would also have have a procedure done on his foot in September to treat at Neuroma a small tumor on his nerve. With the team finishing 35 games out of first, it wasn't like Trout was going to turn around the fortunes of a hapless franchise. This was year two of the great Otani-Trout combo, a baseball fan's dream. But in 2018 and 2019, the Angels finished under 500. In fairness, Otani wasn't pitching in 2019 as he recovered from Tommy John surgery, but it didn't seem possible that a team with these two insanely talented players could finish 35 games out. Now, in 2020, Trout was healthy, but the world wasn't. COVID cost each MLB team 102 games, and no one felt it more than Trout, who in 53 games belted 17 homers, a pace for 52, which would have been a career high. His 46 RBIs would have netted him 140 over an entire season. Basically, he would have blown up baseball. Oh, and the Angels finished 10 games out, again, not making the postseason. Now, going into 2021, Trout was primed to hammer the record books. During the first 30 games of the season, he had already crushed 8 homers and was hitting 333, the best start of his career. He was 29 and at the peak of his production, but instead, he played in 36 games because he had a grade 2 strain in his calf muscle. It was a freak play in May against the Indians. It was the bottom of the first and Trout walked. He moved up towards second and then Jared Walsh popped up, inning over. Trout was jogging to third and back towards the dugout when he heard something pop. He said it felt like he'd been hit in the leg with a line 
line drive. Now, that ended its season. Maybe he could have come back in September, but as usual, the Angels were out of it and there was no point of rushing. Okay, that injury was weird. An entire season for a calf strain? But 2022 would see yet another trip to the injury list, this time for an injured back that made him miss 35 games. And yet, he still crushed 40 homers and had a 6.3 war, 13th best in the game. By now, people were wondering if his body was failing him. As late as 2020, Trout only swung and missed 13% of pitches in the strike zone, but by 2022, that rate was up 24.3%, and this is from one of the best pitch recognizers of all time. Word was out, Trout could be beat with heat. He came back in 2023 determined that his back wouldn't be an issue, but instead into June, he slumped, getting heater after heater. In June, he saw fastballs 78% of the time and it hit a 115. There was no secret to this. It was pure challenge fastballs and Trout couldn't catch up. Then, in a game against the Padres in early July, Trout fouled a pitch back and broke the haymate bone in his left hand and underwent surgery that cost him basically the rest of the season. He missed 49 games, tried to come back, and then missed the rest of 2023. He put up the worst numbers in his career. Is Trout's perfection his fatal flaw? The reason behind his tragic downward spiral? The fact is, a man that large and powerful isn't meant for baseball longevity, not as an outfielder. Mookie Betts hasn't had the same rash of injuries because he weighs 50 pounds lighter. Trout is a player a mad scientist would concoct in the lab. The hand-eye coordination, the raw power, the blazing speed, the competitive fire, but the body belonged to the NFL. Trout's 85.2 war is the 52nd best all time. He will move into the top 30 without any trouble, but catching A-Rod at 117.5 seems like it might be a stretch. But some projections have Trout reaching 135 war by the time he's done, which would rank him 9th all time. As good as these numbers are, without meaningful October baseball, Trout's career will be diminished and not just from his injuries, and that is a tragedy no matter how you slice it.